So the difference between antipsychotic, um, actually first generation and second generation antipsychotic agent is that first generation has a lot of side effects. Second generation medications do not have that many side effects. Another thing is most people now do use second generation uh, types of drugs because A, it does not have side effect, and also it's also um, safer to use. Another difference between the two is the mechanism of action, which we'll look at in the next slide. So when you look at the second generation drugs, do you notice how most of them end with apine? Okay, so when um, a memory trick actually that I learned is that think of people who have schizophrenia. So these drugs are given to people who have schizophrenia. But think of a schizophrenia person who is reading a soothing pine magazine. So a pine magazine, a pine, right, magazine is great for people who have schizophrenia. And so think of soothing pine trees. Perhaps this is soothing to you. I don't know. Um, and these help people who have disordered thoughts who have schizophrenia. So that's how you can remember that anything that ends in a pine, like a, think of a magazine with pine trees and these, um, medications that end in apine help people who have schizophrenia. So let's look at mechanism of action. Um, actually, by the way, this is a good link that um, has a video. The video is not full length because you have to pay for it, but the first half of the video, which is free, is actually amazing. It gives you a great visual of how this um, actually works or how the medications actually work. So I do highly, highly encourage you to watch this video. So let's look at first generation. So first generation antipsychotic agents, how do they work? They are dopamine antagonists. So what does that mean? So in your brain, we have synapses. We have neurons that send neurotransmitters to the postsynaptic neuron, right? And, and that's how messages get relayed. In the brain, it's um, a little different because, yes, we have neurotransmitters that get released. So we were looking at it earlier, right? We were looking at... Um, in chapter three and chapter four, we're looking at neurotransmitters like acetylcholine that gets released. Well, in the brain, what gets released is dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine. Okay, so in this case, we're going to look at dopamine. So dopamine is a neurotransmitter that gets released, and dopamine is a great neurotransmitter to have because it helps you uh, feel better. Okay, so when we have dopamine released in our body or in our brain, we feel good. We feel better. So what the first generation dopamine ant um, antagonist, what this all means is that there are drugs, so this is a drug, it's called an antipsychotic drug, this purple, and it's blocking the D2 receptor. So D2 receptor is just this name, there's many receptors here. This one blocks the D2 receptor, D for dopamine. What does this mean? This means that when dopamine is released, it will not get sent to the postsynaptic neuron and when it does not get sent to the postsynaptic neuron that's actually better and the reason why it's better is because dopamine will just hang out here and when dopamine hangs out over here in the synaptic um, area right here that's great in the brain this only happens in the brain this is great when dopamine hangs out here because we feel so much better when dopamine gets released and hangs out in this synaptic area over here Okay, so the way the first generation medication works is that it covers or it blocks the receptor because typically this will, dopamine actually goes here and then it goes through the postsynaptic neuron and it gets flushed out. And then we, we lose that dopamine feeling. We lose that good feeling. So we want the dopamine to stay over here. So first generation, they block the D2 receptors, which is the main receptor that is important. And so the dopamine will hang out here as opposed to getting pushed to the postsynaptic neuron. The second generation um, medication, the way it works, I want to see if I have a picture. I do not. But the second generation, it's um, it looks at dopamine. It also looks at serotonin and other neurotransmitters, and it does the same thing. It blocks dopamine and it blocks serotonin, which is another neurotransmitter that gets released. So it blocks more than one receptor, not just dopamine receptor, also the serotonin receptor. And so when it blocks, that's actually great because you feel a lot better. You, your hallucination and delusions will be gone. It's also um, anti-emetic, so you don't feel nauseous. You don't feel like throwing up. So it just calms you down. Because we like to have dopamine in our brain. It just makes us feel better. 
Now, as I said earlier, first-generation antipsychotic agents have a lot of side effects. They have, they, they make you tired. They make you have extra involuntary movements. Remember, we're looking at extra pyramidal effects. That's these extra um, movements that we have in our body. Um, they can make us feel faint. We could get seizures. We could get xerostomia. So there's lots of things that could happen with first-generation antipsychotic agents. With second-generation um, antipsychotic agents, they have a lower incidence of um, tremors or involuntary movements and um, less side effects. And remember the A-pine, so schizophrenia people, they like to read a pine magazine, right? Um, that's how you can remember this. Now, the way, uh, one thing to remember is that antipsychotic agents, they do have drug interactions. So if you take epinephrine with antipsychotic agents, you could have a drop in blood pressure. So sometimes we use epinephrine in um, local anesthetic. And typically, it's safe. Okay, what we say is, um, and what this book also says, is that if, they, if someone is an, on an antipsychotic agent, we take their blood pressure. As long as their blood pressure is normal, we're safe to give them epinephrine. So always take blood pressure before administering local anesthetic because that tells us whether we can give them epinephrine or not. So who uses first or second generation antipsychotic agents? People who have schizophrenia. Bipolar disorder and depression are other reasons why someone would be prescribed antipsychotic agents, but the main one is schizophrenia. And this drug over here is a great drug for um, nausea and vomiting. So let's look at dental implications. When someone is on an antipsychotic agent, and usually they'll be on a second generation antipsychotic agent because it's safer, it's less side effects, we need to be mindful of how we talk to these people, to these clients, because remember, they could take um, our words in the wrong way, because they could get, they could think that we're, we're just, um, you know, uh, we're just hurting them or we're just after them. They could have negative impressions of what we're saying, negative thoughts about what we're saying. So be careful when interacting with them and don't take it so personally if they do, if it does come out the wrong way from their end. They could have dry mouth. We need to make sure that we still provide them with toothbrushing and flossing and, you know, all oral health self-care instructions. Be mindful of these extra pyramidal effects that they could have, so there's involuntary movements. And sometimes what can happen is they could have TMJ issues where their TMJ, so TMJ is, um, you know, when they open and close, they they may not be able to open and close as much. Sometimes their mandible gets locked. So it's important that we, um, when the mandible gets locked, we don't force it open, because if we do, we can dislocate the mandible. So there are ways which we'll learn about later on on how to open up the TMJ. We also learn about that in other courses. Be mindful of sedation because some medication causes a lot of drowsiness. And so here we're saying epinephrine and local anesthetic is safe. As long as you take blood pressure and it's within normal limit, uh, you are fine to give epinephrine. So it's considered safe. And orthostatic hypotension. So when we raise the client up in the chair, let them sit there for a few minutes before they get up. Because if we don't, if they get up suddenly, then they could um, start feeling faint. <laughs> 